Hello everyone, this is Ironhide X again. Finally, bringing y'all another video after quite some while. Um, so in the past, I would release videos eh, as much as I could, but the big problem I had was um, where I lived, the internet sucked. And when you record a video and, and have to edit and whatnot and um, encode it, it ends up being you know 10 gigabytes, 20 gigabytes, whatever it is. And when your internet only has a you know 50 gigabyte per second upload or, or even 30 something like that whatever it was it was very low. I mean it would take it would take like a day and a half to upload a video and that was my kind of big thing. But I finally moved where they offer real high speed internet finally. So I'll be able to get out videos more often now. Um, so yay. Thank you for all the subscribers that stuck with me and everybody that sees me in games and says, oh, great videos, man. Keep, keep them coming. That's awesome. And I appreciate that. Um, today, I'm going to do a guide on the Baltimore. Um, very controversial ship. It gets a lot of hate. Uh, so we're going to do a guide on the Baltimore and show you actually how you could do well on this ship. It's got a couple little things. Um, that you can do well. My overall opinion of the ship is I like it. If it has any faults, I think its damage output is a little low. They should reduce its reload by quite a bit, I think, um, to keep up with the other cruisers. But that said, it does have some really cool stuff going for it that, uh, that make it vital. I, I don't think it's nowhere near as bad as people say. I like it. I've enjoyed my grind in it so far. Um, so with my Baltimore, you keep in mind it's not fully upgraded yet. Right now I don't have the big guns here, which just gives me a two second quicker reload. Hence why I was bitching about the damage output, but it still gets the job done. There's a lot of, if you ever get this ship, the very first thing you should get, I think, is the uh, FCF module. Most important. Uh, so after that, my commander, look at my Baltimore commander here. Um, another big skill is this concealment expert. That is a really big deal. So, why is Concealment Expert such a big deal? Well, I'll tell you. Uh, if you get Concealment Expert, and uh, these other ones are kind of optional, but these are how I feel the best uh, setup for the uh, Baltimore and uh, U.S. Cruiser Line in general, uh, except Superintendent until that one you can you can kind of replace with uh, high alert until you get to tier 9, but at tier 9 you really need superintendent because you need that extra heal. Um, and then I got, of course, you know, things for extra AA just in case because it plays on the ship's strengths. Uh, but anyway, back to concealment expert. The reason why you get that is you go to modules and you combine that with the um, concealment system modification 1, you get down to a 9.7 kilometer detection range. Um, which is really, really nice, and it's pretty much, I mean, you gotta have that. Um, that's, that means that if you are moving along in the ship and you suddenly get lit and you don't know what lights you, you can hit your radar, and your radar range is almost, I believe, 9, I think it's 9.45. So the odds are, if you get lit, that if you hit your radar, you will light whatever spot again. And it pretty much makes you invulnerable to a lot of destroyers. Um, so very, very important to have. And as you can see, you can stealth fire beyond 15.8 kilometers. One thing to note, with the stock hole, your detectability is actually 9.5. Uh, I don't know why it went up to 9.7 when I got the upgraded hole, but it did. So having that concealment there just gives you the option to maybe stealth fire. I don't do it a lot in this ship. But it's good to have that tool in the bag and the uh, detectability by sea along with your radar range. Uh, that's a big thing to have. So that's really, you want to get that on your commander as soon as possible. Now, the single most important thing to do with the Baltimore uh, that it can do that no other tier 9 cruiser can do is its armor. It's very, very important and this is what a lot of people don't get. Uh, now that we have an armor layout, you can click on it. The bow armor of the Baltimore is 27 millimeters thick. Now, as far as thickness goes on armor, completely just forget about thickness of armor on cruisers because it doesn't matter. 
um, as far as like as you would think like in World of Tanks. In this game, it's all about the overmatch mechanic. So what that means is if you have a shell uh, and it hits an armor plate at over 60 degrees, it has uh, it'll bounce right off no matter how thick um, or, or non-thick the armor is unless the shell uh, is 14.3 times the millimeter thickness of the armor it hits. So, why is that important? Well, the Baltimore has 27 millimeters of armor. The other cruisers, the Rune and uh, well, all the other Tier 9 cruisers, pretty much, and actually every cruiser under Tier 9, um, they have 25 millimeters of armor. Doesn't sound like a big deal, that little 2 millimeters, right? It's huge. Because that allows the Baltimore to become frontally immune to 15 inch and below guns. That means Bismarck's shooting at you. Like here's my Bismarck right here. You look at my guns, they're 380 millimeters. I think uh, 27 times 14.3 comes out to like 386, I think. Um, so any ship in the game that has 15 inch guns or smaller, pretty much, uh, will bounce off your front. It's very, very, very important to know that, realize that, and that makes angles with this ship absolute your your number one thing to consider when you're fighting. Um, so with that being said, it's better easy to show you how it's done than to sit here and ramble on and try to explain things. So I'm going to put us into a match, a replay I did last night with the Baltimore, and um, I'll show you exactly how to get those angles to work for you. All right. So here we are in my Baltimore in a match. Uh, this was done last night. And uh, again, I'm going to show you exactly how to make that little two millimeters of extra armor work for you and do what the other um, tier nine cruisers can't do. Uh, and it's kind of a big deal, as you'll see. Uh, now on the little screen here, you'll see I got my little pirate icon. I hid that over the chat thing because I was talking mad shit in this match. And, uh, yeah, it was last night at like three in the morning and I was drinking. And so anyways, it's best to have that covered up. <laughs> uh, it was mainly to do with the, um, there's a, uh, one of the new British cruisers in the game. And I was just telling him how bad of an idea I think it is to remove their, their smoke and, um, completely legitimate question I thought but the other people in the game thought I guess like I was insulting their very soul <laughs> it degraded from there so it's best to leave that covered up so um, we'll just be going over here looking for targets of opportunity for now again because I have a 9.7 detection range I know I can pretty much go wherever I want and um, I don't really have to worry about getting spotted and if I do get lit up I know it's a destroyer because only a destroyer would be able to out view range me like that and I can hit radar and I'll find him and kill him. So um, that's a big deal with the Baltimore. Being able to go wherever you want and not have to worry about getting lit and then if you do get lit you have either the armor to survive or you can hit radar and kill whatever's lighting. Uh, it's a really huge deal. Like I said, if I could change one thing on this ship, I just wish I had quicker reload. And again, I don't have the guns, uh, which would give me a two-second two increased fire rate. But even then, I wish it was a little lower. Um, just the Japanese and other ships having the ability to torpedo launch at close range is a pretty nice advantage. Um, and I think this should compensate a little bit more for it. But other than that, I think it's perfectly fine. Uh, the hate this ship gets, I don't, don't get it at all. This thing, uh, pretty much immune to aircraft. The uh, AA on it is fantastic. Um, and you can tank like a battleship, as long as you do it right. Uh, with certain battleships, anyways. Uh, so, when I'm talking about the auto bounce mechanic, there's certain battleships you can play with, and there's certain ones you can't. Um, so again, 15 inch guns and below, that means... 
every German battleship up to tier 8. You can bounce shells with um, Knives Now, Bismarck, Turpets, which you see a ton of in game right now. Every cruiser in the game. Um, it's the 16 inch gunned battleships you have to be careful with. So, like you see on this Turpets here, I'm not worried about him at all. He can't hurt me as long as I stay at an angle, 60 degree or greater. Um, and here comes the shots. I'm angled 60 degree greater. Oh, uh, there's a cruiser bouncing battleship rounds. And um, so Turpitzes, Bismarcks, Nisenaus, anything like that, you don't have to fear them in this ship. You only have to fear them if you show them a broadside or an unangled target. Other than that, they they have no chance, especially with the Baltimore having its heal ability. Again, he's slinging that AP at me. Oh, I'm angled, bouncing those rounds. So he keeps bouncing and I'll keep burning. And that's how you do it in this ship. Um, but this ship has, has another little secret weapon that I'll show you a little, a little later on. This thing's guns, their, um, their hang time is a little bit, a little bit higher than, let's say, the Japanese or whatever, but it's fine. You can still hit pretty much any target you shoot at at any range. The hang time's not that bad. And, um, the guns feel very comfortable and they are effective. And there goes the turpets. Now I'm going to fast forward it a little bit here to try to get to the, the other, um, exciting parts of the match. As you see, there's not really too much going on. Just sitting here taking a few pot shots and destroyers. I want to try to stay with my battleships there. <clears throat> now here I had the option where I could have went south after the uh, the cruiser to my south. But there's real no reason to do that. Fight around the cap circles. That's what's going to win you the match. Um, oftentimes I'll see ships kind of go off chasing one little ship down and they're out of the fight for the whole match. It's not worth it, guys. Just stay near the caps. Kill the, the ships near the caps. Uh, only go off and chase if there's only just a few enemy ships left. Uh, you see here, I found another uh, target of opportunity, another little battleship. Um, and just taking pot shots. Not, doesn't really need too much commentary there. Again, stay with my battleships. Keep going towards the caps. Um, try to protect them. If the enemy carrier sends planes or whatever, you can you can help out uh, in the Baltimore since you have such great AA. And uh, just continue on to B cap in uh, this match, which sometimes turns into a little death trap. Um, but this ship is very agile. It turns really nicely. You can maneuver. So I'm not really too worried about destroyer torpedoes and whatnot. And so here we go. I'll slow it back down. Looking for targets of opportunity. Destroyer again, protect your battleships. They're going to protect you from the big uh, battleships. You try to protect them from destroyers. See how that works. It's a nice little range. But getting um, metal battleships to actually push with you, though, that that is a problem sometimes. But these guys that were with me in this match, good kudos to you guys. Y'all played aggressive, um, which is how I like to do it, and y'all did a great job. I uh, wish I could remember your names. Um, and right now on my software I'm using to encode this and whatnot, the screen's just a little too small. Or I would uh, I would call you out and say, "Hey, good job." Um, so we we're, we're taking this cap, moving through here, and I'm going to continue just to keep trying to engage and look for opportunities. Um, when this match started, the first thing I did in my Baltimore was I looked at the ship list and I saw they only had two ships with 16 inch or 15 or greater guns, so 16 inch guns. Um, and so I'm going to be very aggressive because I know there's only two ships that can really hurt me unless I mess up. Uh, make no mistake, if you go broadside to any battleship in this, regardless of their gun size, they will annihilate you. So you have to be very aware of your angles. This ship, it, that means everything. You don't have torpedoes, so there's no reason to ever, 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 ever show your broadside. It's better to 
be immune to fire and be straight ahead with only two of your turrets firing than to be broadside and getting crushed. Um, now, when you do face a ship that has 16-inch or greater guns, um, it is better to not go perfectly bow on. It is better to angle. That way, if the, do, the, ships, the shells do hit your side, you do have some thicker areas on the side of your ship that could still potentially bounce the rounds, where if you go perfectly bow on, the uh, they will overmatch your front and plunge into your citadel and whatnot. So it is better to not go perfectly straight on. You do want to angle your ship, not perfectly bow on. Um, and that will give you the maximum chance for a bounce on a battleship that has 16-inch or greater guns. Now, as we're going over here, I know there's a destroyer uh, right over there, uh, but he's lit and my radar is on cooldown right now anyways. So I'm just going to take this chance to shoot him up, and I'm going to use his own smoke against him. Um, if you looked on that minimap though, as I was coming over here, you'll know that there is an Iowa over here, and I know there's an Iowa over here, but I'm fairly sure he's in that smoke. And since the destroyer's on the other side, nothing can spot me. I'm going to use it against him. And I'm going to start to play with the Iowa. And lo and behold, there he is. Now, again, Iowa has 16-inch guns. That is a ship that can hurt me. So I need to be very aware of where his guns are pointing. If you see me, I'm constantly zooming in, looking at his guns. Because I want to see where he's looking at and where he's aiming at. Now, he just killed the British cruiser that was next to me. Um, so I know I have 30 seconds until he fires again. So I'm going to use that to my advantage. Uh, now here's the other big thing with the Baltimore. As you see, I swapped to AP. Now AP against a battleship, you say? Yes, AP against a battleship. But first, I have to survive his rounds. So I'm going to angle towards him. And wait for him to make the mistake, which he just did. He hit me good, but nowhere near enough to, to stop me. I knew he's not going to one-shot me at that angle. He'd give me a good blap, but that's it. But now, he has an old Baltimore with AP loaded on his side. It's not going to turn out too well for him. You get on the side of a Yamato or a Montana, you'll do the exact same thing. The AP on this ship can Citadel any ship in the game as long as you're close enough with proper angles. Um, the AP on this thing will wreck things. Um, and then you see I missed this destroyer like three or four times. I My shells just were not cooperating with me there. Um, so, torpedo dancing. See how he's turning that way? When a, when a destroyer is going like that, with when you're near a cruiser, they're trying to launch torpedoes. So I go hard right. I know he's got two salvos of torpedoes, so there's his first one, and he saw me cut this way, so now I'm going to go uh, the, the hard right instead of hard left, and he's going to launch his other one, and there they go. Now he's empty. Now he's screwed. Um, he, is, he has no way to hurt me now. He can maybe shoot his guns, but they're not going to do it anyway. I'm way too healthy for that. And then, so he dies, another ship kills him, thankfully, since I couldn't seem to hit him for the life of me. Uh, I see an Ibuki over there. Now, Ibuki has great guns, but he only has 25 millimeters of armor. And um, he also has extremely deadly torpedoes. However, to launch those torpedoes, he's got to go full-on broadside to me. That thing, uh, the Ibuki, pretty much all the Japanese uh, cruisers other than the Otago, they have great torpedoes, but they have lousy torpedo arcs, so they have to go really broadside to fire them off. So I'm going over here, and I want to catch this guy. Now, this ship is, is maneuverable enough where I figure I could uh, I could take on his, his I could dodge his torpedoes. Um, I see that destroy that battleship there. I have AP loaded still because I was planning on engaging the Ibuki, and I fired trying to take out one of his turrets did not work and then the Ibuki pops up at the same time but I know the caliber of that battleship's guns and I know he can't really hurt me. Um, I was hoping for a Citadel hit on the cruiser there didn't happen so now I've got two ships but as long as I stay angled and you saw his torpedoes already fly he already let him loose so the only thing he can do to me is gunfire 
So I want to try to angle, hold my fire, and again, it's better to hold fire and get a well-placed shot than to spam and pray. There we go. And another one falls victim to the Baltimore. Now, here we go. We have a battleship. The He, again, does not have 16-inch guns, so I don't really have to worry about him from the front. He'll pepper me with his little, um, his little secondaries, and he'll try to shoot his fish out. But again, this thing is extremely agile, and so I'm not really too worried about torpedoes. And then, as you saw, he fired him and completely whiffed. Um, yeah, this is one cruiser, old boy. You're not going to be overmatching today. Uh, so I'm just going to stay bow on, and I'm going to just pound on him with AP. Um, when you have AP against an angled battleship like this, they will do more damage than high explosive, and they do more immediate damage. If he was full, more, if he had more health, I'd try to get a fire ticket on him first. But in this case, he didn't have enough, so I just want to kill him as quick as I can and end the match without him doing too much to me. So I'm going to use AP against him. Uh, and as you see, every shot he fires at me just bounces right off. They do nothing. And boom. And there, guys, is my guide to the Baltimore. Um, don't let the masses fool you into thinking this is a bad ship because it's not it can do things no other tier 9 cruiser can do as long as you have the knowledge to do that so remember your armor and your angles on this ship and you will do really well remember that you could stealth fire at 15.8 and beyond uh, remember that if you do get lit you can hit your radar and find whatever is lighting you because your radar range is pretty much the same as your detection range um, so just be armed with that knowledge, and you can dominate this ship. It's it's not bad at all. I really like it, and I'm looking forward to grinding through it. Now, uh, I want to show you something that someone sent me, which I think is awesome. <laughs> this was sent to me to my uh, one of my adoring subscribers. <laughs> uh, I uh, I love this. This is great. This is awesome. I thought about putting this over the uh, chat box for the whole match, but. <laughs> I decided not to. Uh, anyway, the person who said this to me, you know who you are, you're awesome. And it's extremely funny. And uh, you get my humor, sir. You get it. Uh, anyway, this is Ironhide X. Thank you for everybody that subscribes to my channel and sends me cool comments and whatnot in-game. Uh, again, now that I have new internet and whatnot, I'll be pumping out videos much quicker because this video, for instance, will take me probably 20 minutes to upload instead of 30 hours. Uh, so I will see you soon. Look forward to many more videos and uh, thank you for watching.